G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Before we begin today's video, I'd first like to thank everyone for the recent support of the channel. It's just been incredible seeing the amount of views flourish and just the interactions overall on the channel. So thank you so much for all of that. But uh, today we're gonna to be having a look at the P51D10. This is one of the premium P51 Mustangs. Uh, and as I understand it, it is one of the more competitive P51s. Not necessarily because it's a premium, but because it combines two quite nice little features. Now, as I understand it, there are four American P-51Ds in the game. There's the P-51D5, D10, D20, and D30, and they all range in uh, various attributes. They have a couple of different little things going on about them. The P-51D5 can be con considered to have the worst engine out of the lot, and the worst airframe that being the heaviest airframe. The P-51D10, as I understand it, either has the more high-powered engine or the better airframe. And the P-51D20 has the inverse of the P-51D10. And of course, the P-51D30 has both the good engine and the good airframe. Now, I believe the P-51D10 might actually have the good engine and the worse airframe, since the P-51D20, which I'm quite familiar with in both the uh, American, the Swedish, and I believe now the Israeli tech trees, um, they all have a very, very similar style about them. So with props, we always get a nice big climb. Now I'm going to cut this one out a little bit just because it's not quite as entertaining and there's not a whole lot to talk about about this particular plane. It's a P-51, it's iconic, it performs well at high altitude, you boom and zoom with it, but this particular P-51 you can also do a little bit of dogfighting. And what I mean by dogfighting is very carefully selected energy fighting. That being said, you can't just go find the first thing you look for, YOLO towards it, and hope to come out on top. You don't really do that in the P-51s. You have to select your targets and engage very, very uh, selectively. So what I'm looking at here is this B-5 BF-109. Uh, having a look at me, it looks like he's closing the distance, but the XP-50 is quite rapidly getting behind him, so I think that this particular BF-109 is going to be preoccupied with the XP-50 for now. That turns my attention over to this Focke Wolf 190, and as I see someone sort of sitting on the periphery of the battle, I think that later they might come and bite me in the ass. so I need to deal with that as soon as possible. So, once I see that, I'm going to make my way over towards it. I've noticed that he is the highest target, that means that he is the greatest threat, and I'm going to head slowly towards him. I'm not going to go for a full commit head-on. As you can see, I'm slowing my bank in order to make him turn a little bit more and therefore waste more energy if he wants that full commit head-on, and it looks like he's doing that weird not a head-on bullshit that you should not be doing at all because it just wastes your energy. I am running tracers here simply because they have all APIT, there's no tracer shell dedicated um, because it's integrated into the armor piercing, but there are also just fewer high explosive, all those other things. I quite like the AP belts, they set fires, they damage modules, and they do wonders to snipe pilots. Now speaking of sniping pilots, I'm going to try and get this pilot on the BF-109 here. It looks like he's distracted, so we're going to go in a little bit of a deflecting shot. It looks like he's going down a little bit. I'm going to leave the guns a touch, and nothing quite strikes home. There's some damage of his right flap, and I suppose that's one of the downsides of running APIT. If you don't hit any modules, you don't really do a whole lot of significant damage. But this thing, I've noticed, sets fires like you wouldn't believe with APIT, so I'm going to run with it, and it looks like we have ourselves a fire, lo and behold. Now, there is a quirk with this plane. I'm pretty sure it's a bug. But when you pull full elevator, it does tend to roll a little bit. So just be mindful of that if you're going to fly it out. I don't really know why, but here we go with our energy fighting. Now this BF-109 is on a clear energy disadvantage, and it looks like he's fairly slow. Maybe he's not paying attention. Maybe he's run out of engine power. I'm not really sure what's going on, but I'm just going to lead the guns a little bit and try and finish him off. It looks like I can't quite get my shots on target. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lead my uh, lead one wing and just ignore the other, pretend it doesn't exist. But no time to dwell on that because we have ourselves another enemy here and the BF-109F4 is actually quite a well-turning plane. So I'm just going to try and stay out of his guns and when it looks like he's about to get in towards uh, that, that kill shot, I'm going to throw in a little bit of rudder and uh, try and throw him off here. It looks like the XP-50 has also come to help. So this is really, really good for me. And as I roll down thinking that there's an enemy above me because the sound is a little bit funny, 
Uh, I'm going to go around and see if I can get him now that the XP50 has got a firm grip of this BF109. It's uh, time to move in for the Angie shot because when I get jumped like this, it does pro provide with a little frustration. I'm not, I'm not exactly the most uh, calm person when I get jumped. So having a little bit of satisfaction here, a little bit of uh, payback, if you will, is really, really satisfying. And it looks like the BF109 has pretty much just lost all of its steam here. And uh, that's a pretty quick, pretty quick shot. This guy's gone. And that is it for this particular, uh, this engagement here. The XP50 has been an absolute help here, and you'll find that the P51D, any P51D, is really going to struggle without the help of some friendlies, because this plane is an absolute team player. And the next match will show you that very, very well, uh, because the guy that helps me out here is an absolute legend. But in a case where you have an energy advantage like this, all you're going to do is go up a little bit and try and keep your speed. I've got 650 kilometers per hour here, so the only reason I'm chucking a little quick head on here is simply to get this guy to full commit to me. Now you can see that little quirk there with the plane going off in a funny direction, but that's helped me in a way because it's taken me from the AAA. And I don't really want to deal with AAA because it can be very, very RNG. And now that the BF109 here has gone up, it looks like he's going to commit to me, and I'm just going to go over, using that extra excess energy to convert it back into uh, altitude and then again into speed. Hope that this guy follows through and it looks like he is going to follow through in a last resort head on. I managed to get a pilot snipe because the 50 cal's come in clutch and the point that I managed to contact was perfect with the convergence of my guns. Now this match here is going to be a very very long slog. It's uh, going to be going to be difficult because I can already see a Pion Mirsky, a BF109 at altitude and two Focke-Wulf 190s sitting together now. This is going to be a little bit of a funny moment because I'm, I'm pretty sure these guys are role-playing, but uh, at the same time, they've still got guns, they've still got wings, and they still have engines, so they're still going to be a threat to you. So, I'm going to be coming in and trying to find a spot that is very convenient to engage these two. They're quite slow, um, but that doesn't mean that they're not a threat, because at the same time, we are going to roll out of the way of the guns, I'm going to pitch up because I know that these guys are slow and I'm going to see if I can just outmaneuver them in a spiral climb. So it looks like I've managed to get on top and both of them seem to be engaged with the other P51. So what I'm going to do is go for the one that, uh, you know, wasn't going for the P51, which was probably the more stupid maneuver. I should have gone for the other one in retrospect. But it looks like this P51 might have him sorted out or at least it's going to be very close and maybe I can get in to save the P-51, provided that he doesn't pit. I say, provided that he doesn't pitch up, and that's exactly what he did. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to save the P-51, and uh, now that leaves me in a 2 versus 1, almost a 3 versus 1. This is going to be really tough, unless I can put some rounds downrange and get a nice critical hit on the right wing of the P-51, of the Focke Wolf 190A. This uh, other Focke Wolf comes in, but notice how I've managed to extend my, uh, my lead. I'm not wasting any energy in turns. What I'm doing is I'm making sure that every run that I make is either going to uh, keep my speed, or if it's going to bleed my speed, result in a kill or at least some serious damage. Now, the Focke Wolf 190, who I damaged just then, has announced to the whole game that they're going to return to base, which means that they are now in uh, a bit more of a, an energy, sorry, not an energy, a numbers, uh, advantage that's uh, starting to, to dwindle now this means that I can get into dogfights and you can see I'm pitching up here because I know I've got excess energy and I'm gonna take the fight into the vertical because I'm gonna shed speed quite quickly in this vertical and this means that I can potentially get a funny little shot behind the 190A this has pretty much resulted in exactly what I've wanted it is perfect lineup and it looks like I'm gonna get those tracers downrange all I need to do is lead the shots perfectly, and there we go, there's the fire, which is absolutely perfect for me. Now, I've gone to have a look at my team, and my team has done a heck and vanish, so we are not in a good situation in that respect. But I have my ammunition, I have no damage to my plane, I have plenty of fuel, plenty of wep, and my engines are not overheating. That's only kill number one, and we are just getting started here. This XP-55 has gone down, but I have an altitude advantage or a speed advantage over pretty much the entire enemy team. And this is exactly what you need in the P-51. Regardless of 
whether it's an extra 200 kilometers per hour, an extra 500 meters, any advantage is a welcome advantage. And as you can see, I throw on the WEP, starting to heat the engine, and I've noticed that this Focke Wolf 190, who I've damaged from earlier, is coming right back towards me. So this is the perfect opportunity to demonstrate maybe a rope dope I'm going to pitch up, keep going up, and I'm bleeding speed quite a lot, but I know I've got better energy retention than the Focke Wolf 190, but I also know that I've got more energy. So even if I didn't have better energy retention, I know that I'm going to be able to dive back on top of this Focke Wolf 190, who's gone a little bit too ambitious, and now it's just a matter of me getting my shots on. Now the 190 disappears away, manages to get on the... Um, on the front foot here, or not quite on the front foot, but at least avoid my shots. And now he's pitching up for me yet again. But like I've said, I've managed to keep my energy advantage. I'm storing my altitude, a speed, and then going back to the way it was. And it's providing me with this opportunity to continuously boom and zoom this Focke Wolf 190. And it doesn't matter if I'm going to miss. It doesn't matter what I'm what I'm going to get up to. I'm always going to have that extra opportunity to dive in and take some shots. The only thing that's going to limit me is my patience and my ammunition and my fuel. And I've got plenty of ammunition, plenty of patience and plenty of fuel. So very, very easy done deal right there. Now this Focke Wolf 190 who's also barreling towards me is going to be quite a threat because he's coming in quite quickly and I don't have as much altitude as last time. So I'm going to go for a quick head on and then I'm going to pull straight up again try and avoid his shots, I managed to avoid them perfectly, and I'm going to sit again up into the vertical because I know I've got a decent amount of speed, and if I can pull away as much as possible, I'm very confident that I can outturn a Focke Wolf 190A4, even in a low speed dogfight, even with this very heavy P51. You can see that I am just managing to do it very, very, very well. The Focke Wolf 190 has pretty much not too much over the P51D. It's almost an even match in some circumstances, but the uh, Focke Wolf 190 can be very, very heavy. And if you don't manage your flaps, and if you don't manage your turning well, you are gonna lose to a P51. It doesn't turn quite as well. It certainly rolls better, uh, but roll rate is not going to save you against a uh, P51 with an energy advantage. Now, I've seen a Piermierski, the Focke Wolf 190 from earlier, and a 264. Now, I don't give a shit about the 264, neither should you. The 264 can sit up there, that can waste away, I couldn't care less. The fighters are more important because at the end of the day, you can just strap on rockets and go after that uh, 264. And if he chooses to camp the base, you can just bomb him. There are plenty of options to deal with him, and I don't really feel like being shot down by a yet another undertiered German bomber. So what I'm gonna do is just climb and focus on the fighters. This uh, Focke Wolf 190 that engaged me very early in the game is also coming back. And now I've got an A7M1 with me, and the A7M1 is going to be the MVP here. This guy is going to be an absolute legend. It looks like he's managed to distract the first Focke Wolf 190, and this provides me with an excellent opportunity to come in guns blazing and, and uh, snipe the pilot. So Pyon Mirsky is up next. We're going to try and go for a quick head-on, but it looks like we're getting too close to that AA. I really don't want to take my chances. So the BF-109 is going to be the next target of opportunity here. I am keeping my speed, and that turn, that 90 degree turn, has damaged some of my energy. But I have the A7 right behind me, you can see there on the minimap. And the BF-109 is going for one of those not ahead ons which is, again, quite comical. But at the same time, you know, he managed to dodge my shots, so uh, why am I really complaining? Now the A7 looks like he's going to get a firm grip on the BF-109. But unfortunately for him, the Pure Mirski looks like he's heading back, and so the A7 has to continue to maintain either some energy or has to go and finish that BF-109 right here, right now. I've managed to convince the uh, A7 to go for the Pure Mirski, and so there's a little bit of a dogfight there ensuing where it looks like the A7's in a two versus one. Now, I noticed the 264 coming back, and I've also noticed that we're heading back to the AAA because both of those enemies are looking to get an easy uh, sort of way out. The A7 thankfully snipes the Pure Mirski, which leaves the BF-109 and a Focke Wolf 190. If we can get those guys, we win the game because the ME-264 will have no more cover and it'll be sort of us and some bombers and we'll have plenty of opportunities to claw this match by tickets. Taking it slow now, we have to sort of step back and take a breath because at this point, we need to decide what we're going to do and we need to work with our A7 here because otherwise we are going to lose. 
because this 262 can very, very easily turn the match around if he has the opportunity to land, rearm, repair, get out of there. But at the same time, we also need to consider that AAA as well as the BF-109 and the Focke-Wulf 190. Now, the BF-109 climbs away a little bit with his buddy and decides that he's going to stop lounging around at altitude and come and fight. So he does one of those not head head-ons again and the focke 190 decides that he wants to, at the last second, go straight for me. Now, I'm going to put myself up into a vertical, and the A7 is going to manage with the BF-109, because the A7 can quite easily defeat the BF-109 in a turn fight, but the BF-109 is marginally faster, so I'm going to see if I can deal with this focke in the meantime. I put some pretty poor shots down range, but hopefully I can put some uh, sort of left that I've got, I've got uh, 369, which is a very nice number, bullets, and I'm gonna set a critical hit there, keeping my eye always at all times on that BF-109, hopefully trying to finish off the A5, I get myself a nice fire, and the BF-109 is still sitting at altitude away from me. He's no longer a danger to me, he's not a danger to the A7, because now we're both together, and it looks like if I can get this BF-109, then we are gonna win, but the A7 is now, <laughs> Have a look at him, he's, he's just an absolute chad. He's kept that 109 off me. And that's the exact point of flying in a squad. That's the exact point of teamwork. This is perfect, perfect teamwork by me and the A7. He's keeping the enemies that are vulnerable to me or that are, that are deadly to me away from me. And I'm keeping the ones that are deadly to him away from him. And this, this is why the P-51 works so well when you have the teammates to back you up. Anyway, ladies and gents, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed watching my P-51D gameplay. I really like playing the P-51Ds, but uh, I hope you do too. Anyway, ladies and gents, thank you for watching. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.